This one where it's so difficult to innovate. And yeah, we've kind of seen uh, two trainers who have picked slightly. Here we go. It's time to get started with our next round here. Right away, it's going to be that ogre stone, cornerstone ogre bond hitting the field next to Calyrex, Maridon, Urshifu on a god he's on. So a uh, pretty safe matchup for uh, Arash here. You know, give him the opportunity if he wants to, to try to set up that trick room. But, you know, how much will he trade to do it, right? If both Pokemon to attack, potentially to uh, could lose that Ogre Pond immediately. And uh, also, you know, one of the great things about Maridon with, uh, you know, a high likelihood of locking into Volt Switch here, uh, can you bring in some other Pokemon to help deal with a potential trick room? And that's the thing. There's not really a way to really prevent it, but if you at least have this option of switching out and having something a little bit more attuned to the situation, that can help out right away. Terrestrialization be kicking off the match. It will be the Calyrex Ice Rider. This one into the Fire Tight. Right, follow me, Ogre Pond. Terrestrialization staying safe regardless, making sure all the attention has gone over to it. Is the Volt Switch going to be the move of choice? A lot of damage, even though it's not very effective. That's going to be thanks to that critical hit. Is now we're going to go back in an opportunity to see what Agati has here in the back. Yeah, there's uh, some good information here. We're going to see the Incineroar coming on the field, dropping and Intimidate. And while this uh, Ogre Pond may not be long for the battle, uh, Calyrex is going to be free to do whatever it wants. It will be the Incineroar that hits the field. The clear amulet onto that Calyrex is going to make sure that attack is not dropped. So we'll be able to still hit a full force once it gets this Trick Room done and over with. The second hit into the Ogre Pond is going to be it, but no Trick Room. Instead, we're going out onto the Eventual. Glacial Lances, not very effective into these Pokemon, but still a considerable amount of damage into that Urshifu, bringing it down to about a third of its health. Yeah, the Clear Amulet kind of paying dividends there. You know, just a little bit of a chip, but uh, Urshifu now in a position where a second Glacial Lance, if Arash was able to get it off, could perhaps pick up that knockout. Great, and I'm curious too, looking at the situation with that Calyrex not going for the Trick Room on that turn, because it is a slower Pokemon, and when we're kind of eyeing up the Pokemon on Agati's end, specifically when I look at that Maridon, it's something that can maybe air quite well. We get an opportunity to see now though, there is that Iron Hands as well. So that is a Pokemon that can do well in the Trick Room situation. So maybe uh, just wanting to kind of soften the Pokemon up. So once that Urshifu hits the field, you can start taking these big KOs. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, you see a situation here where it should normally be a great protecting turn, but since Urshifu's ability sort of prevents that, it's going to get a free blow on one of these Pokemon. And that's going to be the close combat into the Calyrex Fire Terrestrialization and just the natural bulk's going to take it quite well as, of course, Urshifu now. That's going to be the defense that's lowered. We're not about the attacking anymore. Calyrex, that will now be the Trick Rooms. The dimensions are twisted. It's going to be slower Pokemon moving first from here on out. Yeah, kind of a nice little trade for Arash, perhaps, getting to use that Trick Room a turn later. You know, uh, if we can wind up in a situation where it's in danger of expiring, uh, you know, using the ability, the moves in that order where you would have gotten the same damage anyway, but now effectively just gets an extra turn of Trick Room by using them the way he did. And that can be so nice. And it's nice, too, because with this Incineroar coming in um, the previous turn and it's already used its Fake Out, you're not wasting one of your Trick Room turns by, well, being prevented by this trick room, right? And since you've already damaged the Urshifu so much over onto Gabrielle's end of the board, another Glacial Lens will be able to go ahead and pick this off. And the Urshifu that you have should be able to deal with the Incineroar quite handily. The Urshifu, though, on this turn, just wants to be swapping out an opportunity to get a fourth final Pokemon in. That's going to be the Rillaboom. Uh, interesting. So perhaps trying to stay a step ahead, we'll be able to threaten a fake out on the next turn. Yep, and being able to prevent things. It will be protect this time around. It, do note that it's not going to be helpful against that Urshifu, but it will be useful up against the Sucker Punch. If you're not ready in attack, nothing's going to be happening at that point. So the Sucker Punch, null and void, and the follow-up knockoff, not going to do anything either. And now you have that prevention to be able to stop one of those Pokemon. So great swapping coming out from Arash. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe it doesn't look like a whole lot happened there, but, you know, gets the Grassy Train active, which helped you. It already taken a bunch of damage on his key Pokemon. Uh, gets the Fake Out threatening the other direction, and perhaps avoids taking a knockout that would have, uh, even though it would have been nice in the short term, perhaps would have made it uh, more difficult for him to keep momentum here. Uh, it's to turn up Trick Room, but now uh, likely threatening a potential knockout in that Urshifu slot. Uh, and Rillaboom able to use Fake Out now, probably on the Incineroar to prevent that knockout from, knock off from happening. One thing to note, though, is we do have the Terra Ghost over onto the Incineroar. So it, 
you do have the option of trying to go for the Trastalization, but Arash can then kind of call into that as well and go into the other slot. It's not going to be the fake out though. Instead, just a smidge of chip going into that Incineroar and damage dealt in return thanks to that Rocky Helmet. Sucker Punch won't be too much into the Calyrex, but now the Glacial Lance. It was already so much softened up into the Urshifu. That is going to be KO'd. Incineroar now out to a third of its health. Not taking nearly enough damage from either of those two Pokemon. Chilling Nay though. That's going to be the first attack boost going over to that Calyrex, which does hang on through the turn. The clear amulet's gone, but Calyrex holds on. And maybe just enough HP. You know, see the, the impact of the grassy terrain there is uh, Calyrex just holding on by a thread. And uh, hey, you know, Iron Hands are going to come out now. And uh, maybe you're not so upset if you're a Gatti here, right? You've almost knocked out this Calyrex. You're going to be able to most likely burn a turn here with help from the fake out. And uh, there still is that Murata in the back. However, you know, uh, you, know, you got to be careful not to lose too many Pokemon here either, right? You know, there's still a very healthy Rillaboom on Arash's side of the field, and eventually, if you're looking toward a win condition where you need Murata to close the game, you'd certainly prefer to keep your terrain active and not allow the uh, grassy terrain to come on and slow things down. And that's kind of one of those things that when we're looking at why Rillaboom can fare so well into the Maradon is that capability of just going and rewriting that terrain. Protect again. So there's been two turns throughout this trick room that Arash has had to go for the Protect to make sure that the Calyrex isn't going to be getting KO'd here as the first attack does go on hit into it. Flare Blitz is going to be the follow-up. It's in our target into Rillaboom instead. Super effective, but a still a sliver. Some huge survivals coming on through. And that's going to allow the Wood Hammer. You're going to knock yourself out with some recoil, but great damage into that Iron Hands. And now a free swap to bring the Urshifu back in. Yeah, it's a uh, trading Pokemon quickly now where uh, kind of a fascinating little situation here where a uh, Calyrex kind of forced to go on the defensive there. Uh, and maybe both sides make a little mix up, right? There's no fake out, but also, I mean, that damage trade, uh, the recoil really relevant. And now uh, if a guy he wants to, he's able to control the terrain later once me riding comes back in. And I believe this is the final turn of Trick Room. So once this Trick Room is done, well, the Urshifu should be in a great position to be outspeeding at least the current Pokemon out on the field. Though you are still in a really dangerous situation once that Maridon comes back out. And I think that's kind of what I'm eyeing up the most here in this situation. And at this point, Agati has taken a lot of a lot of momentum. Hasn't even used terrestrialization yet. Yeah, and I think that makes this really scary. You know, uh, Arash really doesn't want to allow that Iron Hands to attack, potentially pick up a knockout on this Calyrex. Uh, I think the Urshifu is going to have a really difficult time winning any potential 1v2 here. So potentially a game-winning turn for Agati. All right, we still got to make an official terrestrialization into that Iron Hands. Going to go ahead and terrestrialize into that Terra Water. More so a defensive type coming on out. Try to make sure you're not going to be taking too much from these two on the other end. Aqua Jet's going to be first. Negligible damage. Nothing happening there. Is the Wild Charge follow up. The Calyrex already so low. That's going to be the KO confirmed. And Amadi down to his final Pokemon. Yeah, it's uh, looking tough for Rasha this first game. Uh, and Sinora as well, you know, kind of just sitting there like, hey, wait for me, I get a turn too. Uh, Flare Blitz <laughs> not going to do too much here, but well, we'll continue whittling down this Urshifu. I guess not breaking the Sash, but, you know, uh, helping things along a little bit. And you know, both trainers do at least confirm the speed order that Iron Hand's uh, out slowing, I guess, the Calyrex on the other side of the field. Uh, it's kind of one of the adjustments we've seen throughout the course of regulation. The Iron Hand's often running slower builds, and we really see it pay off in this first game. Yeah, which is then really interesting looking at that trick room because it was a trick room that if it had been a turn sooner, actually, then you would have had the situation that the Urshifu could have maybe started dealing some damage in this end game that it could have been. The Calyrex still making it on through, but this Iron Hands that Agati had in response, great job. Great job to be countering the trick room in the situation, bringing it out at the opportune moment. And Arash is forced to continuously be protecting this Calyrex and just kind of put on the back foot. So when I'm looking at the situation, I'm curious with how this game two is gonna be shaking up. The Cornerstone Ogre Pawn as well was a Pokemon that was essentially right from the get-go as a 3v4, because that was a Pokemon that got doubled into turn one because of the follow me and you don't really get much from it. Yeah, I thought that turn one was devastating. I think that it's just really tough for Arash to win if they were both to lead the same Pokemon again in this next game. I think Agati's plan was really good, right? It's like two great Pokemon to helping deal with the Trick Room and back. Gets to attack for free with the Muradon. Uh, it was still there hanging out in the back. We never got yeah. to see it, but it still <laughs> would have been a big problem with actually closing the game. And there wound up being so much pressure on the Calyrex, it was really difficult for it to actually attack. Um, I think given the Pokemon that wound up being in the back, uh, we're talking the beginning of the game about how well Arash had delayed that trick room. Uh, maybe you should have just delayed it 
uh, infinitely and not used it at all there, right? Where it wound up kind of uh, not only wasting a turn where Calyrex could have done some damage, but also just uh, put him in a challenging spot where the uh, speed control is more controlling Calyrex than it was Calyrex's opponents. Yeah, and I'm still even just looking at the fact that uh, Gabriel from the get-go, the Maraid on Volt Switch, damage, I'm out. And even if Rash was able to get a little bit more headway in that trick room, the second it was done, there was still going to be that Maraid on in the back. So that's going to be something that I'd look to see answered here in this next game. And I definitely agree. If there is the trick room going out, I I don't like it going up against this Iron Hands, but we do have to be finding a way that Calyrex can be set up for a little bit more success. We might see a deviation in the play, but it's not going to be in the leads as yet again coming out from Mirage. Cornerstone Ogre Pond, Calyrex, and this will be going off against the double figure opportunity here from Agati and Cinderor and Iron Hands. Yeah, I mean, uh, weird that kind of like this at least a little bit more if you're Rosh. I mean, uh, you know, it probably even less excited about trying to use the Trick Room this time, where now both of the Pokemon that wind up being out and slowing down that Trick Room are just hanging out in the field. But uh, because of that, uh, the turn order is somewhat advantageous for Arash, and he gets some information, right? Um, you have to try to figure out the four Pokemon that Agati has brought. You've got to assume Miraidon is one of the two that are missing, so uh, immediately he knows probably a very similar game plan to the previous game. I'd be eyeing up here, too, because... Coming out from Mirage, when you're staring down the double fake out, it could just be really easy. Okay, spiky shield protect and just make sure nothing's going to be happening. But if you also think that there is going to be this swap, you don't really want to give one over for free. So you could go ahead and make a call. And a guy has definitely ways to potentially punish off of that. It's going to be Terrestrialization yet again, making sure this Calyrex Ice Rider it's heating up as much as possible. Fire type, you're not looking to be taking super effective hits from this lead combination, which also shows that it's not going to be protected. It will be fake out to stop it in his tracks instead. Is Ivy Cudgel. All right, I like that. It's super effective, but thanks to that Intimidate and no critical hit, will not get the KO. And that's going to be a lot of damage in return. Well, these Pokemon are angry. Uh, right? Yeah, for uh, you know, what you normally don't think of as like two highly offensive Pokemon, uh, Ogrepot nearly picking up a one-hit knockout. Hey, if it had gotten the added effect of that Ivy Cudgel, the increased critical hit rate, it wouldn't have. Uh, and then Iron Hands hitting back off the heart itself, uh, knocking it down to the Focus Sash. And uh, wow, it's an it's interesting start to this battle. It definitely is. And for the Incineroar, when you're looking at ways to be slowing down, it's maybe something you don't want to be losing from the get-go, but you do need to be dealing with this Ogre Bond sooner rather than later. And the Iron Hands wouldn't appreciate this hit either. And if you take the turn to swap out the Incineroar, the Iron Hands, it's not going to be faring the greatest for a double up going off. So yeah, It's pretty scary, right? Because I think anything potentially that Agati has in the back, the combination of one of Ogre Pond's attacks and Calyrex just could be a knockout. So yeah, kind of just have to give the Incineroar up here. don't want to risk throwing the game on the second turn. Well, that means there's not going to be any knockoff from that uh, clear amulet, and there's not going to be a way to be slowing that attack from that Calyrex. This is Fire Off's first Glacial Lance of the match. Single target, a lot of damage into the Iron Hands. Drain Punch and Retaliation, not going to be dealing that super effective thanks to Terra, but it will still get some healing back, though it will not survive another Glacial Lance. Yeah, that's a pretty scary situation now, right? You know, the uh, Ogre Pond still has that that one that, uh, solitary hit point, which could make a big difference here. So you see Maradon entering the field, uh, could pull away whatever attack it is. You'd assume it's probably a Volt Switch, but uh, that will allow this Calyrex potentially to attack again. And um, even though it won't do quite as much damage to the Iron Hands as it did last time, because uh, it will be a normal uh, Glacial Lance attacking two different targets, uh, it's potentially a lot of free damage once again. And that's going to be a dangerous situation with that Maridon. And even at this point, if you want to go for the Volt Switch, we already saw how much damage the Urshifu even took from something like that Calyrex to where that's going to be dangerous as well. And if you're forced to be just taking that damage over and over, I mean, Arash still has this lead out. This Ogre Pond has definitely been such a threat. So really dangerous situation coming on through. You could go for something like a spread damage attack. You do have access to that Dazzling Gleam, but because of that Terra, um, that Terra Fire, you're not going to be dealing in nearly enough damage. Yeah, it's also mostly slower Pokemon, the Gadi sign, right? If you're kind of working toward, well, how can he feasibly win the game? You know, he doesn't know two of Arash's Pokemon. If he has something quicker there, um, you know, we may be in a situation where Murata and he needs an awful lot of work in this match. All right, that is going to be the Cornerstone Ogre Pond acting first. Horn Leech soften up this Iron Hands just a little bit more, but it could not hear nearly enough. That is going to be an easy KO for the Maridon Volt Switch. Get it out of there. Maridon's going to be swapping out. It will be Urshifu rejoining the battle, but it's going to be, assumingly, another Glacial Lance. And that is definitely an Iron Hands, but then soften up enough. 
to be not taking this hit. No trick room in sight, all out offensive. I think he heard you. So much damage for the Urshifu. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge knockout there. Now, uh, I got to get down to his last two Pokemon. You know, Rush finally going to have to replace one of uh, his as he gets that uh, boost from the knockout. And uh, this is a tough spot, right, where, you know, Miranda going to have to lock into a move now uh, with those choice backs, no longer going to be able to zip in and out of battle. And uh, Rush has all the information he needs now to make the best game plan he can, given the Pokemon he selected. And considering we saw the Rillaboom in the match number one, not too surprised to see it coming out here onto the field so you do have this fake out option as well to make sure that one of these pokemon cannot act and with the maridon being that choice item seemed like an obvious hit into that as well and with that speed interactions of course them both hitting the field at the same time the rillaboom will have that second terrain so that will be the grassy grassy terrain to make sure the Maridon furthermore doesn't get to do what it wants. Yeah, it's a really tense decision now for Gotti. We're like, oh, geez, you know, what do I want to lock into? What do I want to predict? Uh, gets faked out here. Uh, potentially a very difficult turn, but he's going to have to make an amazing call to keep himself in this one. Ooh, well, already we'll have to see how this call works out. Stara, Terra Stellar onto the Urshifu. So again, this is going to deal a lot of damage for the first one, but no, instead it will be fake out into that slot. Nothing coming out from that, but it's not going to be a risk of getting KO'd as the Draco Meteor that connect and Calyrex goes down. Final two Pokemon for both our trainers. Yeah, so uh, it's getting a little more interesting now, right? We have the same amount of Pokemon left on both sides. Uh, Murana will be locked into that Draco Meteor, but we see how much damage it does uh, at its normal level of special attack, now going to be dealing with increasingly reduced special attack for the remainder of the game. So uh, can this Urshifu with so little HP still make a difference in this game? Going to be tough facing down two Pokemon known for their ability to use attacks with increased priority. Well, at this point, too, so much damage has been done into that Urshifu, and the Rillaboom does have the Grassy Glide to try and just pick it off. And the Urshifu over on Omali's end, even if it definitely would not appreciate a hit from the Maridon, it does have the Focus Sash, so it will take one hit. It's going to be the one to fire off an Aqua Jet first into the opposing Urshifu. It's going to be hanging on, but the Sucker Punch that was fired off is going to fail. All the priorities coming on out, and it's going to be the second one from the Rillaboom to seal the deal there. <laughs> sort of a strange looking turn there, but it winds up going very well. And uh, yeah, now Maridon's going to need to knock out two Pokemon. Oh no, oh, it's not no. going to knock out any Pokemon there. Uh, Whiffs the Draco Meteor fails to break the Focus Ash with the Urshifu, and I think we're go going to see a game three. It just didn't want to go that negative four, right? It knew that the damage was not going to be there. So instead, you know, a mess, you know, get out of there. But I think, too, with the amount of damage that it would have had to do, that it would have been locked in the bag. And I'm so excited we get to see a game three, especially, too, with how differently they panned out. With just that switch of not going for that trick room, the Iron Hands, I mean, it just got picked off so easily. And I loved as well that the other big switch that we didn't necessarily get to talk about from the get-go, but was so impactful, was that Ogre Pond. It basically did nothing in the game one. Okay, I kept the Calyrex safe for one turn, didn't matter. But this time instead, those Ivy Cudgels and taking care of that Incineroar from the get-go was so huge. And from there, I mean, the damage just stacked up. Raj was clearly in the lead from there. Yeah, I thought it was a really well-played game. And I think that the you know, unfortunately for Agati, the adjustment just really didn't work there, right? Um, there's no threat or it didn't really create like the situation where Arash felt like he needed a trick room, right? Where hmm. you know, perhaps if Miranda had started out on the battlefield, you know, at least he's got to make a more difficult decision. But, you know, there's no need to trick room in front of those two Pokemon, right? So uh, he doesn't really even bait the opportunity. Um, I, I think, you know, and nice thing about winning the first game is that you can afford to experiment a little bit more in that second one. Maybe he expected Arash to switch things up more, but instead basically got exactly the same plan as the first game, and it just worked this time because it was Agati who kind of misadjusted himself into a loss. I mean, you definitely could afford to take a loss, but now it's going to be a tough one because I think that even from the get-go, I mean, that Ivy Cudgel, it didn't get the KO the first time around, but it has an increased critical hit chances. So it could have even been more of a once-added match from that moment to where Agati has to be so careful going on into this. And if you know now that Arash doesn't necessarily want to go for that Trick Room mode because you showed that you can answer it, where are you going to make the adjustment this time around? It's time for game three. See who's coming out on top. And big adjustment, Iron <laughs> Treads of all Pokemon making its appearance at the World Championship. Paired up with that Maridon. All right, let's get to it. The hero has arrived. So i uh, very excited to see this Pokemon appear in this game. And it uh, creates a very interesting situation here uh, with uh, the speed increasing with that Quark Drive. I think there's a real chance the Iron Treads may actually be the quickest Pokemon on the field now. And uh, that Ogre Pond 
creates some interesting situation, right? It still does have the uh, effective focus dash from the sturdy ability, so uh, upon and continue uh, the pace of the battle forward. And this Calyrex, whether it wants to Terrasalize or not, doesn't look great up against this Iron Trends. If you're like, eyeing up something like this Rock Slide, which I think is going to be huge in this, and since it is a spread damage attack, the Ogre Pond can't really sway it away. So the Calyrex, if you want to make sure you're not taking a lot of damage, you do have to go for that Protect. Rock Slide's only going to be hitting the one now, and it is going to essentially break that sturdy of this oh, no. Ogre. Okay, guess not. Okay, that's going to be a big miss. Horn Leech in return is going to be the damage dealt. Yeah, pretty strange to see Mirada as the last moving Pokemon in a turn. Right? Not, not just slower than the uh, the partner with the boosted speed, but actually just naturally slower than the Ogre Pod. And, uh, you know, a strange turn, you know, probably expecting to get a mostly guaranteed knockout on that Ogre Pod. Fairly unlikely that Horn Leech would have healed enough to negate that Rock Slide. But, um, hey, you know, not the end of the world. Uh, avoided incorrectly attacking that Protect. And now uh, one of these two Pokemon come in. We see the Pokemon that got dropped uh, from the previous two games is that Incineroar. So uh, no longer willing to take Ivy Cudgels. Instead, choosing to uh, bring these other Pokemon. But because of that, uh, Ogrebun's still not in that bad of a spot. I mean, if we can connect the rock slides from here on out, maybe it could be fine, especially too if the Ogre Pond, if you're ready enough an attack, bringing out the Urshifu, you do have the Sucker Punch, which would deal a priority. So you, you do have to be a little bit careful because if it doesn't ready it up, it's a little tricky. Yeah, and Iron Pink being faster because of that ability is a big deal, right? Because it's going to make this turnover a little awkward. If it is able to knock out Ogre Pond, then uh, even with a Follow Me, it would allow the Urshifu to take a swing at this Calyrex. And you know, even if it were to terrestrialize to improve its type matchup, it's still a lot of damage on a critical Pokemon. Uh, and it's a tough spot for a rush, right? Because even if you're assuming the Rilla Boom's in the back, it's really difficult to get that back out there. And it, it's no longer worth it just to turn off the ability because then you don't have the right combination of Pokemon out to exploit it. But uh, Calyrex having to flee because of uh, the huge threat of Iron Treads. <laughs> Words you didn't thought you'd say this weekend, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I definitely don't know my choice band Rock Slide, um, Iron Tread, um, Calculations. That is going to be at this point, though. Rillaboom coming on in, and with that grassy train, the quark drive is gone, and the speed is going to be reduced from that Pokemon. So it will be that Cornerstone Ogre Pond to act first, hitting into the other slot. It will get a good amount of health back. And all right, maybe I don't need to know how much this Rock Slide does for a lot of Pokemon, because those two took it so well, and no flinch. Like, like it's too slow. It can't flinch. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is definitely how it felt when I used Iron Treads. Like, hey, bud, give me a little more damage, maybe, but um, still, you know, a decent chunk there. And now we have things reversed, where it's the Rillaboom out on the field, and perhaps Maridon could switch back in, reactivate that ability. Um, you know, if you get a fake out into what is currently the Urshifu slot, allowing this uh, Iron Treads to get an attack off, it could be a huge swing. So we'll have to see what this Rillaboom does. Well, at least with the Rillaboom out on the field, it's safe. Maridon back in, Electric Terrain activated, Cork Drive, get your speed back and have the fastest Rock Slide. Try and just deal that little bit of damage. Try and go for those flinches. Because, hey, if you're locked into this move with this Joyce Band, you might as well go for it. But really smart swap. Already the Rillaboom going to be switching out Urshifu back out onto the field. You don't necessarily want to be taking a hit here, but you will. Rock Slide is going to break that Focus Sash, bring Ogre Pond just down a little bit lower, but so much damage done in return. Yeah, I mean, I've heard where there's a rock slide, there's a way, but that wound up being a mostly negated turn. Uh, it does break the focus sash of the Urshifu, but otherwise, not too big of a deal. And uh, critically, a Rillaboom gets out of battle without losing too much momentum, right? Uh, and this matchup between Miraidon and Rillaboom, it is kind of valuable to have your terrain Pokemon in the back so you keep getting control. And uh, Miraidon will get a chance to attack here potentially, but doesn't get a whole lot out of its time uh, out of the battle. and. If Arash wants to, it can bring Rillaboom right back out there, reduce the damage to this attack. And that's the weird thing, too, because if, since the Iron Trends is actually just relying on that Quark Drive for the speed, the second the Rillaboom hits the field again, that Cornerstone Ogre Pond is going to be out speeding. No swap, though. Detect for the Urshifu instead. Make sure not going to be taking damage past that turn. Maybe eyeing up something like that um, Bolt Switch, and you're not wanting to take that hit. And that's not going to be enough damage. The Rock Slide <laughs> into the Ogre Pond, but it will finally get that flinch. Marido now dazzling. Gleam spread damage attack. Sure, it lives, but it's going to be taken care of now. Maybe there is a way with these rock slides. Yeah, the flinch is big, although I think it really wanted that non protect there or non detect, I guess, where uh, that would likely have been a double knockout. Instead, now the Urshifu going to be able to get out of his turn safely. And regardless of which of the two Pokemon Arash chooses to send out first, I assume it's fairly likely we see a uh, Rillaboom in a hurry here to change the terrain back. 
It's weird though at this point because now even if you do swap it out with the terrain, the Iron Trends will still be able to kind of threaten this damage. So you kind of want to try and take care of this Iron Trend sooner rather than later, but then the Calyrex doesn't get to do anything. Yeah, I wonder if you go for the, like, uh, Iron Trench's defense is very high. It's its highest stat, like, for, uh, I don't know if Aqua Jet KO is here. If it did, that would really open things up, but uh, I think that would probably be too risky. Uh, it's a really difficult turn where uh, things are looking a little shaky for Agati for a while, but he may have found enough window uh, because of Iron Treads. Yeah, that just damage that stacked up over time and the Horn Leech unable to quite be taking the KO. Trasalization now coming on out and it's going to be into this Terra Fairy. So the Dazzling Gleams that you're locked into are going to be doing more damage as well. You're not going to be taking super effective hit from something like a Glacial Lance. Time to see where how much damage, but not quite. We'll put that on hold. Another Trasalization. Normally it's been the Calyrex and yet again, Terra Fire coming on out. Yeah, it's uh, gaining a resistance to the Dazzling Gleam, which uh, not quite how you normally use this Terra, but uh, definitely does improve the situation significantly for Arash. Aqua Jet doesn't pick up the KO, it will. So the Iron Treads does go down. So the Terra Fire, making sure that, hey, you're not going to worry about that Rock Slide. And this Dazzling Gleam coming on out, you'll take this hit well. The Urshifu doesn't though, super effective on that Pokemon. Now a rush down to final two as Rillaboom will be forced to re-hit the field. Yeah, it's a huge knockout, though. Not only is a Trick Room going to activate here, uh, make Calyrex one of the quickest Pokemon for the remainder of this battle, although uh, we see now it is that Iron Hand as Agati's final Pokemon, so it will, uh, once again, out slow Calyrex. Um, but Rillaboom, at least, uh, it's been pretty damaged, but going to be able to flip this terrain for the final time. And uh, Mirana now, even though it uh, does a shockingly good job of avoiding damage despite not getting direct uh, assistance from a teammate, going to be locked into a move for the rest of his game that Calyrex resists. I mean, even at this point, the Rillaboom hitting the field, yeah, you've changed the terrain, but the Maridon's already hitting with the Dazzling Gleams anyways, and I end up the Rillaboom otherwise. The Iron Hands is going to be the quote-unquote faster fake out being the slowest thing on the field so you can't just fake out the Rillaboom and just go for the KO to have this 3v1 situation especially since you have used the Trasalization to take the hit better from the Calyrex. Yeah I think the Iron Hands is probably the Pokemon to beat in this matchup uh, even though it was once again Arash who used the Trick Room I think getting it off the field is going to be a huge pain. All right, this situation, instead of going for the damage for the KO, we're going to play it safe. It's going to be the switch coming on out, and Urshifu joining back out onto the field. Minder Trick Room is up. The Calyrex will be protecting on this turn, making sure the fake out is not going to be hitting into it, as that is the attempt coming out from Agati. The Rillaboom will be the only one to act this time around. Looks like it's going to be going for that damage is Woodhammer. Boosted by the terrain, critical <laughs> hit, but the Iron Hands will hold on, but the Rillaboom <laughs> Rillaboom won't! Oh, the, the crit mattered, but in the wrong direction there. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say how much I love that read by Arash, but I think he actually kind of gets hosed by his own critical hit. I think because of that, Rillaboom is knocked out what it otherwise would not have been, and he does get that 3v1, uh, despite not getting any damage of his own on the field. What a strange turn. I've never <laughs> I've never had a situation where it maybe like looked or not a critical hit, but that is absolutely rough, especially too. You need that wood hammer damage onto the Iron Hand. That is something that could take these hits so well otherwise. So you kind of needed that. The Calyrex, it is in its situation of choice, but now you're staring down three Pokemon. The Iron Hands, if you go for the Drain Punch, I don't think you're going to be healing up nearly enough damage past these Glacial Lanches to even, like, it doesn't matter, but oh man, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> See if Calyrex can do it all of its own. Gonna have to take this wild charge, and that hurts a decent bit, but uh, I think it's about to get its revenge. All right, here we go. Glacial Lance coming on out. The Urshifu, good for this go around, but the Iron Hands, it did, it did great in getting critical hit to take a KO. It can finally earn its rest. Agati now down to two. Trick Room in situation. It is a chilling Nabus, which is a little bit dangerous for this Calyrex. And sure, there has been the Trastalization, so not the most damage is coming on out. But if this Maradon doesn't follow up with the KO, it could get a little weird. Yeah, now Nevin is no longer weak to those moves, you know, uh, unless a, uh, you know, that, that single attack boost is enough to get a one hit KO on this Maradon, which would likely require another critical hit. Uh, a big electric type attack the other way could close this game for Agati. Oh, it'll be the Glacial Lance C, get a critical hit. The Urshifu goes down, Maradon takes a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. Holding on, gets an opportunity to fire back the Calyrex. Sure, you got another chilling Nay boost, but the Electro Drift is headed your way. Terra boosted, it's gonna go down. And with that, 
Gabriel and Gotti to take a great win in this 2-1 series. Yeah, you can't ask.